I just had the worst nightmare. What was it, honey? You, you know that Rebecca Nurse chick? Yes? She was signing the devil's book that oh. everybody's talking about. Oh my gosh, I honey, know. are you okay? Oh, it's okay. God, I have to tell you about this dream I had last night. Like, what was it? Oh my God, that like Rebecca Nurse chick was yeah. all like signing the devil's book that like the Indians have and stuff. Oh my gosh, wow! Do you think like that's a sign? And maybe like maybe. she's like one of those witches or something? Possibly, I'm not sure though. Oh my god! <laughs> you need to get more white men to sign the devil's book? <laughs> yes, those white men are stupid. What's about that with book and notes? How can thou put me on, child? I am not thy witch. Rebecca Nurse, this courtroom finds you not guilty of the crime of witchcraft in the first degree. Oh, thank you. Rebecca Nurse, this courtroom finds you guilty of the crime of witchcraft in the first degree. You are sentenced to hanging. Oh, no! Please, no! I can't, hold on! Oh, Mr. Stewart! Rebecca Nurse was the daughter of William Town of Yarmouth, Norfolk County, New England, where she was baptized February 21st, 1621. Her sister, Mary, Mary er, also accused and put to death for witchcraft, married Isaac Eastie. Another sister, Sarah Cloyce, was also accused of witchcraft. Nurse's husband was described as a tray maker. The making of these articles and similar articles of domestic use was important employment in the remote countryside. He, sees, he, sees, he seems to have been highly respected by his neighbors and more often than anyone else was called in to settle disputes. Nurse had four sons and four daughters. Nurse was one of the first unlikely witches to be accused. At the time of her trial, she was 71 years old and had acquired a reputation for exemplary pity that was virtually unchallenged in the community. It was written of Nurse, this venerable lady whose conversation and bearing were so truly saint-like, was an invalid of extremely delicate condition and appearance, the mother of a large family embracing sons, daughters, grandchildren, and one, of, one or more great-grandchildren. She was a woman of pity and simplicity of this is the house Rebecca Nurse grew up in. That her reputation was virtually unblemished was evidenced by the fact that several of the most active accusers were more hesitant in their accusations of nurse, and many who had kept silent during the proceedings against others came forward and spoke out on behalf of nurse, despite the dangers of doing so. Thirty-nine of the most prominent members of the community signed a petition on nurse's behalf, and several others were others wrote individual petitions vouching for her innocence. One of the signers of the petition, Jonathan Putnam, was originally sworn out of the complaint against Nurse, but apparently had later changed his mind on the matter of her guilt. Unlike many of the other accused, during the questioning of Nurse, the magistrate showed signs of doubting her guilt because of her age, character, appearance, and professions of innocence. However, each time he began to waver on the issue, someone else in the crowd would either 
repeatedly accuse her or one of the afflicted girls of breaking out into fits and claim Nurse was tormenting her. Upon realizing that the magistrate and the audience had sided with the afflicted girls, Nurse could only reply, I have got nobody to look to but God. She tried to raise her hands, but the afflicted girls fell into dreadful fits at the motion. At Nurse's trial on June 30th, the jury came back with the verdict of not guilty. This was announced that there was a large. When this was announced, there was a large and hideous outcry from both the afflicted girls and the spectators. The magistrates urged reconsideration. Chief Justice Stoughton asked the jury if they had considered the implications of something Nurse had said. When Hobbs had accused Nurse, Nurse had said, "What do you bring her? She is one of us." Nurse had only meant that Hobbs was a fellow prisoner. Nurse, however, was old, partially hard of hearing, and exhausted from a day in court. When Nurse had asked to explain her words, she's one of us, she did not hear the question. The jury took her silence as an indication of guilt. The jury deliberated a second time and came back with a verdict of guilty. Shocking as it seems to say, it was not uncommon in the 17th century for a magistrate to ask the jury to reconsider its verdict. Her family immediately did what they could to rectify the mistake that had caused her to be condemned, but it was no use. The nurse was granted a reprieve by the Governor Phipps. However, no sooner had it been issued, the accusers began having renewed fits. The community saw these fits as a conclusive proof of the nurse's guilt. On July 3rd, this God-fearing woman was excommunicated from her church in Salem Town without a single dissenting vote because of her conviction of witchcraft. Nurse was sentenced to death on June 30th. She was executed on July 19th. Public outrage at her conviction and execution have been credited with generating the first vocal opposition to, tri to the trials. One of the gallows nurse was a model of Christian behavior, which must have been a sharp contrast to Sarah Good, another convicted witch with whom Nurse was executed, who used the gallows as a platform from which to call down the curses on those who would hickle in her final hour. It was not until 1699 that members of the Nurse family were welcomed back in communion as a Turk of the church, and it was 15 years later before the excommunication of, of Nurse was revoked. In 1711, Nurse's family was compensated by the government for her wrongful death. 